Well, hello, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. So this week's blog is a little different, and it's a little bit more somber. All right? It's called Israel and Saudi Arabia Must Save the World. There's a reason why I reference Saudi Arabia in this one. So, as you guys are all aware, Hamas, which is a terrorist organization, but in control of the Gaza Strip, as, long, as well as certain to be gaining control of the West Bank, launched an attack last Friday against Israel. Now, Hezbollah, which is another terrorist organization in Lebanon, has begun launching attacks from the north into Israel as well. There's been a number of deaths, a number of casualties, a number of Israeli citizens, along with American citizens that have been captured and brought back to uh, the Gaza Strip to be held as hostages. Um, this is absolutely horrific. It's a humanitarian crisis, obviously. It's a, it's a direct you know, threat to Israel's very existence, but it comes not organically from Hamas or Hezbollah. It comes from their master, Iran. Iran is the one who's calling the shots on this one. And I truly do hope that Israel uses this as an opportunity to take out Iran's nuclear ambitions, all right? Now, let me explain why Iran, I believe, is so uh, petrified about what's coming between Israel and Saudi Arabia. So back during the Obama administration here in the United States, the uh, Obama administration decided that they were going to do a geopolitical pivot. We had always been strong supporters of Israel. We've always been antagonistic towards Iran for what they did to us during our hostage crisis. But academics within the Obama administration said, maybe we should switch alliances. Maybe we should throw Israel under the bus and instead use Iran to become what we call a regional hegemon, you know, essentially the center of power within the Middle East. And we can use Iran to control all of the Middle East states as well as Saudi Arabia, right? Saudi Arabia being the largest producer of oil in the region. And after all, Israel, uh, the only thing that they've really got for us is the fact that they happen to have a democracy. And the Obama administration, quite candidly, was not terribly impressed with the idea of democracy. So we started doing this movement towards focusing our attention on building sticky relationships with Iran. Um, now, this was moronic from the outset. Let me just pause that, okay, pause that idea. But that's the direction that they were trying to go. The Trump administration completely reversed course, realigned itself with Israel, and thanks to Jerry Kushner, decided to promulgate the concept of the Arab of the Abraham Accords. This was creating peace agreements between Israel and a number of the Gulf states, Saudi Arabia being one of them. And Saudi Arabia and Israel are in the final stages of developing not only commercial ties, but also security agreements between them. Now, Saudi Arabia and Iran are direct natural competitors, both in oil as well as for the hearts and minds of the Muslim community. Um, so with Saudi Arabia forming an alliance with Israel, this represents a direct threat to the concept of regional hegemony among the Iranians. So the Iranians are using their shock troops to have the Palestinians, more specifically Hamas and Hezbollah, launch attacks against Israel with the thought being that this will cause Saudi Arabia to want to back off, to want to stay away. You know, um, essentially it's Iran flexing its muscles. The ultimate benefit from this act would be for a joint alliance, an agreement, a, a legitimate, a coordinated military campaign by both Saudi Arabia as well as Israel, which would be unbelievably historic, against the Iranian regime itself. That regime is despotic, it's tyrannical, it 
it abuses its own citizens. It is time for that theocratic regime to be relegated to the ash bin of history. And this horrific genesis, this unprovoked attack by the by Hamas as well as Hezbollah might be the germinating factor that brings about its ultimate demise. You cannot negotiate with a group of individuals that have your death as their ultimate goal. You cannot only be willing to die a little bit. They, it simply doesn't work. There is only one alternative. When that level of recalcitrance begins to manifest, there is only one alternative that's left, and that one alternative is complete extermination of your enemy, and that is what Israel and Saudi Arabia should do. Anyways, I do encourage you to read the blog, uh, and by all means, you know, disagree with it. I totally understand that as well. As always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.